invited us uh, to all share one idea that we all felt very passionate about. And data and the way we can actually use it in the technology function is something that I'm very, very passionate about. Now what I'm gonna share is a little bit controversial, but I think that's actually probably the point of this afternoon, to basically tickle a little bit the, uh, the interest and see what you think about it. Because I'm sure half of the room will probably at the end of it say like, hmm, I totally disagree with what, just with, with, with what was just shared, yeah? So a little bit of background. Um, I work mainly for big American companies. I was about uh, 18 years with Procter & Gamble, the big competitor, the product the producer of Pantene, Pampers, uh, Perry, those kinds of things. I had a short stint at Ipsos, uh, and at the moment I'm at Staples, the office supplies company. Uh, I'm Dutch originally, um, but I worked and lived in seven countries, so I've seen different cultures in action, uh, and I lived about six years in, uh, in London. And I really, really throughout my career, I've actually had a passion for how we can actually use technology to drive the top and bottom line. Yeah? Building very nicely to what the previous speaker said, is how do you link the technology to the business objectives? Yeah? And I really believe that that's where, we, where our future lies, and that's also probably why I'm talking right now about analytics. So Staples a little bit, I think in the UK, you may all know Staples because of the stores that we got here. Uh, it's a very big retailer. But what many of you may not know is actually the third biggest online uh, company in the world after Amazon and Apple. Uh, but admittedly, that's mainly in the US. Yeah? And we're definitely not up there from a capability point of view. Um, but we're building very, very hard to get our platform to actually compete with the Amazons of this world. Yeah? Now, the other thing that many people do not know, we got a very big contract business. It used to be a company called Corporate Express. They did contracts with big, uh, with big companies so that we actually serve one company throughout the world for their office supplies. Yeah, headquarters in Amsterdam, so I relocated from London to Amsterdam a few months ago. So our opportunity. So we talk a lot about, and actually later on, I think Daryl is talking about the CDO. Yeah? Um, there's always a lot of conversation about how, how does this work with marketing gaining in importance, the percentage of the IT budget spent by marketing increasing year on year. Yeah, I would be surprised if you don't hear about that today. Um, but actually, I think that discussion with the CDO and with the CMO, I'm actually not sure that that's actually the battle that we can win. I think there is an area out there. I think there's an opportunity out there where we can really, really much more easily make an impact as technology function and IT professionals. And that's really the analytics area. Now, instead of analytics, you may want to call it business intelligence, you may want to call it big data, you may want to call it visualization, but it's basically the whole area of taking some data, driving some insights out of it, and actually creating a better business decision. And I believe that we, as an IT function, we're unique, uniquely positioned to really make an impact here. So the reason to believe this is real marketing speed, right? So when you sell a brand, you need to make sure that actually people, and why, does, why do you actually want to want to buy this brand, right? You need a reason to believe. So what's our reason to believe that our, our IT, we as IT function can really make an impact? So I think it's really underexplored. Yeah, in my experience, the finance function makes a big play <coughs> in the space. But typically they limit themselves to management reporting. Yeah, my, my, the, the, the litmus test typically is, do you actually, as, mar as IT uh, as finance function, do you worry about market share? Yeah? Do you worry about supply chain data? And typically, the finance function doesn't. Yeah? They focus on the financials. They focus on anything that drives forecast and profitability. So all the rest of the data analysis is almost unexplored. Yeah? So it's significantly less contested than digital marketing, right? Because we are never going to own the brand. Yeah? And I think the social media and online presence is now so mainstream that we are never going to own that space. Yeah? I used to run in an, early uh, in an early phase at P&G, I used to run digital marketing for all the 300 brands uh, of P&G <coughs> in Europe. But this was in the early days when marketing still had to be convinced of the power of the internet. Yeah? When of course marketing adopted this and said, hey, this is mainstream, yeah? just like outdoor advertising or print advertising, there's no way that the technology function can play a role there. Yeah? The third reason I believe we have a role to play is because it's really the top of the IT value pyramid. Yeah? I would love to move my organization continuously higher up the, the pyramid. Yeah? There are things that are commodities, and if we only focus on commodities, then I think we're going to be out of business pretty, pretty quickly as IT professionals and IT leaders. 
So we continuously need to think about what's the next big thing out there, yeah? And how do we actually leverage that to continue to stay relevant? Because relevant is, I think, what it is really about. And last but not least, I think this plays uniquely to the strengths of ITs, uh, of IT, yeah? Analytical skill, yeah? And I'll give you an example later on. But typically, when you have a marketeer who understands the customer or the consumer really, really well, they are not always the people who are the analytical people out there, yeah? And typically in your teams, if you really look around it, you've got business focus IT, you've got demand managers, you've got people who are business analysts. They typically understand the business, but they also bring a healthy dose of, biz, of, of analytical skill with them. The data know-how. If you think about big data sets, you also need to think about its limitations. Yeah? What can you combine and what can you not combine? Yeah? In media land, when you talk about TV advertising, you talk a lot about something that they call GRP, which is how many times have you added your, how have you hit your target group with this advertising? But guess what? You cannot add up GRP across different target groups because that really that doesn't mean anything anymore. But the system allows you to do it. Yeah. So you need to understand what you can and you cannot do with data. And I think many times it will actually be the IT function that understands that better than many of the people that are ultimately aim to use it. And last but not least, the tool set. On the one side, the tools are getting easier. On the other side, the tools are getting more complicated and more powerful. So what I've seen is that there's a layer where indeed the end user or the business leaders can easily use the analytical tools, but there are more and more powerful analytical tools out there. And you really need somebody who understands the tools and actually even develop models for pricing or for insight generation. And typically there are IT professionals can, can do this really, really well. So let me give you a little bit of a, of a history. Yeah? Um, when, I, uh, when I joined PNG in 1995, I was, one of my first projects was to develop a reporting system on uh, TV advertising. Yeah? And I considered my mission the delivery of reports and information to the business functions. Yeah? So what I did is I made sure there was a system that had all of the data in there, there was data quality, I trained the end users, uh, I created some standard reports, and basically I said, please now go and build a business. Yeah? But what really, really happened is that in many cases, data had never got used properly. Yeah? People did the wrong things with the data. Not everybody, right? But I would say there was plenty of opportunities out there. And there was a very strong misunderstanding of the limitations. Yeah? Because to some extent, it's also unfair to actually a guy who's very good in selling to expect that person to actually do a lot of the uh, heavy lifting on analytics, hmm, maybe not, that was, that never said, that was never <coughs> mentioned in the job description, yeah? And this is in a company where every single new hire goes to an analytical uh, skill set. Yeah, so the people are smart, but still they're not hired because they are such, uh, they have big foreheads and data scientists, yeah? So what happened is we actually had a lot of bad decisions. Even though the data was available, it wasn't necessarily used, yeah? So a few years later, 10, 15 years later, the technology function within PNG actually realized this is not about uh, this is not about us providing data. This is about us actually improving the decision. And if improving the decision means that you need to do a bigger part yourself, then so be it. Yeah. So what we ended up doing was actually recruiting people that were data scientists that would help and guide the decision making of the most senior management. Yeah, finance still own the financial domain, but there's plenty of areas out there, market share, supply chain data, operations data, that actually nobody looks at. Yeah? And so we use that as an opportunity to, to, to impact the decision making of the total company. And the picture that you see here is a data room that was actually used to not just introduce a person that was guiding the process, but also a place where you could actually uh, leverage the power of visualization. And I'll come back to, uh, to that later on. So it's not about delivering the information. Ultimately, we're all in charge of actually impacting the business and improving the decision. And if that doesn't happen on its own, then maybe we should assume a bigger role. So let's talk a little bit about the total business intelligence pyramid. So typically, we very clearly see this as our domain. Yeah, we own the quality-based data. Yeah, we own the master data in many cases. We make sure that whatever is in our data warehouse is correct. Yeah? Typically, we play a big role on the standard reports. Yeah? This is the pushing out of a PDF or an Excel report 
and make sure that you got your daily operations report with your key KPI. Yeah. Um, Self-serve analytics, there it gets a little bit more. You can actually flip some dimensions. You can do some filters. This is typically where Cockpit would, uh, would fit or a dashboard. So basically, it means it's getting more advanced because you can do a little bit more analytics. But there's also fewer people who will typically do this. Yeah, because already you need a certain degree of analytical skill. And then the top of the pyramid is really where you need the people who are data scientists. And they can sit anywhere. Yeah? If you have a company whose base business is data, then obviously that will not fit your IT. If you've got a company whose base business is manufacturing, yeah, or retail, like Staples, where I'm at right now, that means there's a big opportunity actually to help uh, those functions that are building the business and that are actually selling by actually providing more data. The other insight is uh, <coughs> we, we did some partnership with McLaren. Yeah, McLaren, as you know, not only, uh, not only is very successful in Formula One, maybe last season a little bit less, but uh, overall I would say they have a very, very strong rec track record. It's also there's an applied division, an applied technology division within McLaren where they will help Heathrow or hospitals to actually improve the way they deal with data. Because the amount of data that gets sent from the car to uh, the computers at McLaren is immense. So it's a way of processing data that they can easily reapply to other domains. So one of the key insights that we got from McLaren is also very valid in, in, in the business sense, which is what kind <coughs> of information is, uh, is needed to do your job. Yeah, so if you've got uh, Lewis Hamilton driving around at 200 miles an hour, you don't want to be bothered with too much information. Right? I mean, you've got many other things to do, including changing the brake balance and many, many other things. Yeah? So the guys at the pit wall, guess what? They have significantly more information than the driver has, but still, they do not have everything. And this is the secret sauce that many people do not know about. Is during the race in Woking, so in Woking, Surrey, there is a control center where there is 20 or 25 analysts who don't do anything else but run simulations. Yeah? They analyze more data, they run simulations, and what they do is they only provide certain insights to the pit wall, not everything, because that would be data overload, and they provide certain data to the driver. Yeah? So one of the big things about the role of IT is that what do you want your salesman to do? Yeah? You want your salesman to sell. Yeah? And the technology function, I think, can really help play the role of the, of the control center, feed it to the pit wall, which are people who are much more embedded in the business and facing the customer. So different audiences, different information, is that an opportunity for IT? <coughs> the other one, I know we've, I've had many discussions with people about big data and about analytics. And one of the biggest, one of the most frequent pieces of feedback is, we don't have all the data together. Or we do not have this atomic data warehouse that has every piece of data at the most granular level. And I need that to be able to do analysis. Nothing can be further from the truth. Yeah? You can really change <coughs> things tomorrow by taking a very small data set and just unleash visualization on it. Yeah? Forget about advanced stuff. Yeah? Just do visualization on a small data set and you'll start changing the world. Yeah? Um, because even when not all data is available, even when it's just a small data set, you can actually try and improve the insight into the data by letting some of the visual tools loose on it. <coughs> this is probably one of the most powerful ones. Yeah? I've been part of so many management teams where we use big spreadsheets yeah? uh, with, with 248 rows and we try to analyze the business. Yeah? Uh, and it's a whole morning. And actually what it does, and you see this as one of the root points, I feel many times that we're not even talking about the big topic. Yeah, we're not talking about what's driving the business in a good way or a bad way. We just let, in my case, the sales guys actually focus on whatever they want to focus on. Yeah, yeah, this, big mar this market has grown 48%. Yeah? But guess what? It wasn't the one that really made an impact because the total volume of the market is very small. Yeah? <coughs> charts like this don't make you get away with it. Yeah, what this chart says, these two countries are the biggest two countries, or basically these together are 50% of your business. And guess what? They're growing. That's good. Yeah? If they were red, then it doesn't matter that you actually have a beautiful 48% growth here. Yeah? So this is something you can do tomorrow. Yeah? And if you're not going to do it as IT function, yeah, because you understand the tools, you understand the data, and it's a great opportunity to move yourself up the value chain, then actually I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. 
So I think it's a real opportunity to put IT in the driving seat. Yeah, I know that many of you may think this is not our role to play, but really I believe once we got our bread and butter under control, once you've got a stable systems environment, and even if you do not yet have a full system uh, environment that's stable, you should start thinking about the future. Yeah, after you're done with your EMP, EOT standardization, what are you going to do next? Yeah, I mean, we've got your exchange, you've got your EOT, what's next? Yeah, do people still need you or will they outsource you? I think this is our very best way to continue to drive the top and bottom line. Yeah? Thank you very much. <laughs>